Hey, welcome back to the channel. And we are back with another Weekly Wears video. If this is your first time finding my channel, my name is Gerard. We talk about fragrances here. And today's video is just me talking about every single fragrance that I wore for the entire seven days prior. So if that is content that you think you wanna see more of, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on bell notifications so you get updated whenever I upload something new. I feel like I had a really solid week of choices of fragrances. so. I'm gonna talk about each one, tell you guys what I think of them and why I wore it. So also, I wanna thank everyone for all the love, the support that you guys have poured into this channel over the last two years. The growth has been not what I was expecting. I am so appreciative of it. You guys are the best. All my subscribers, uh, anyone who's not subscribed yet but keeps coming back to watch, thank you so much. Everyone who comments, you guys are the best, and I'm so blessed to have that support. It's all I could have asked for, and it's motivated me to uh, continue to make these videos because I love making them. So if you guys like watching them, I'll continue to make them. Thank you for that. So with that all being said, let's jump right into it, starting with Sunday. On Sunday, I reached for a fragrance that could be one of my most, it probably is one of my most featured fragrances on the channel. I absolutely love this one. I talk about it a lot, and for good reason. The scent I'm talking about is Masoni Parfum Porome. And this is a cheaper alternative to something like a Blue de Chanel, but I prefer this one. And I've said that a lot of times on the channel. Just a masterful blend of aromatics and citrus sweetness. It has this little bit of a metallic vibe to it. I can't get enough of this. It made my list for uh, biggest dents in my collection. So I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see it there. This has quite a dent in it. And I have over, uh, you know, I have almost 200 bottles of fragrance. So uh, to have a big dent like that, uh, that, that means something. So this one is really versatile. I find myself wanting to wear this more often than not. It's easy to wear to work, it's easy to transition into the evening, so it can work for a night out, date night. This is the true definition of a modern signature scent, in my opinion. On top of that, this gets great performance. Lasts a long time, great projection, compliment factor is there. I usually get a compliment when I'm wearing this, so just really easy, it's gonna work every season, uh, jack of all trades, and Really nice presentation. You got the magnetic cap. So they went the extra mile on the presentation. Feels like a heavy duty bottle. This checks every single box. Just buy it. It's so damn good. I'm gonna link it down below. Masoni Parfum Porum. On Monday, I reached for a scent. It was a little cooler that day in the Boston area and I wanted to wear something warm, spicy with some freshness. Scent I decided to go with is Spice Bomb Infrared from Victor and Rolf. And the first time I smelled this scent, I fell in love with it. I didn't buy it right then and there, but I said, I'm definitely gonna be grabbing that soon. Warm, spicy cinnamon with this ribbon of freshness running through it. And some people compare this to like Big Red Gum, if you've ever smelled Big Red Gum. Uh, I can see that. It, it definitely has that vibe to it. Also, if this makes any sense, the bottle is red, the presentation, the whole thing is red, and it smells like it would be the color red. And that's just association, you know, as you said, as I said, big red gum and cinnamon and those things, uh, hot red candies, all of it. it has this really nice, well-balanced sweetness. I think this is a versatile amber spicy scent because of that freshness. So it has just the right amount of freshness to it to be able to be worn during the day and in more situations than one might expect. I think a lot of people consider this a night out scent. Yes, it can be used for that, but I'm into versatile fragrances. I like things that if you kind of own just one, it's gonna have you covered for every situation. I have a lot of those. This is one of those. So especially in the cooler months, it's gonna be easy to wear to work. You can definitely pull it off there and it's gonna take you into the evening as well. So 
Incredible stuff. Really good performance. This one I go back and forth with for my favorite in the house. And now there's a new favorite, possibly, that I'll be talking about later in this video from Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb line. But this one, just amazing. Absolutely love it. Spice Bomb Infrared from Victor and Rolf. So this next one that I wore on Tuesday is already an inexpensive fragrance. Super cheap, really budget friendly. Somehow I even managed to pay less than that. I, I want to say I grabbed this for like 10 bucks at a Marshalls at the time. So these do pop up, but I haven't seen one since. And that was a couple of years back. Scent I'm talking about is Azaro Porom Nighttime. So this is one of the lesser talked about Azaro uh, Porom flankers, but I think it's one of the best, at least from the ones I've tried, not the best atomizer. Has this shave foam feel to it. A little bit metallic, uh, clean smelling, but what really stands out here that modernizes this already uh, kind of vintage feeling, aromatic uh, shave foam type scent is the rhubarb. The rhubarb adds this fruity earthiness that is really authentic and it smell, it's right up front. It's the first thing I pick out when I spray this. And that settles down as it dries down and it becomes more of that, no, you know, you don't have to think about it, fresh out of the barbershop type scent. But that rhubarb in the, in the opening really sets this one apart. It modernizes it. It makes it feel uh, more for current day uh, gentlemen. I actually get really good performance from this as well. It's one of those ones that I don't mind spraying a little bit heavier. It is inexpensive, but one that is a sleeper, in my opinion. It doesn't get talked about enough. Absolutely amazing stuff, especially for the price, performance. As I said, I wear it heavy, so it lasts me all day. This is an ideal uh, office scent. Uh, I, I don't know how my wife really feels about this one. I've had her smell it before, and it's not that she dislikes it. It's just not one that really stands out to her. But uh, for me, super masculine and really easy to wear. Azaro Porom, nighttime. So this next one was one of two fragrances that I picked up in my last rack store haul. So if you guys have not checked out that video, be sure to do so. I will link it here. Scent I'm talking about is Dunhill Edition. And this is a scent from 1984, and it doesn't smell like it has changed a bit. I haven't smelled the original, but this smells like it's from 1984. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not gonna be for everyone. There's just nothing modern about this scent and the nutmeg, the oak moss, the citrus are what really stand out here. And although there's a million notes in typical 80s style fragrance fashion, there's a million notes, but only a few stand out, at least to my nose. And that, that's that. Uh, the oak moss here really makes this smell dated especially how it's used here. It's really heavy handed. That's my opinion. Uh, it might not be heavy handed to someone who is more uh, akin to wearing these types of fragrances, these vintage style uh, scents. So, but it is a classic masculine scent, a classic aromatic fougere that is going to appeal to a lot of guys, especially older guys. There's just one that this Reminds me a lot of, of the, you know, the guys that I knew growing up, like uncles and, um, you know, that type of thing. So this is what people wore and this type of DNA. And that's what you're getting here. So for that, from that standpoint, it's a really nice scent. I think it's good quality. This is probably not one that I'm personally going to reach for that often. It's just not my thing right now. It's just not what I'm sort of into in terms of fragrance style. But I can understand why someone would really enjoy this one. Uh, in terms of performance, I got pretty good performance. It lasted pretty much a full work day for me, um, although it sat much closer to the skin uh, after an hour or so. So performance is nothing spectacular, but you're still going to smell good, and you're still going to be able to pick it up you know, six or seven hours later. So not a bad scent and pretty inexpensive. I paid 20 bucks for the 100 ml Dunhill Edition. This next one, whenever I wear it, my wife compliments me on it, asks me what I'm wearing. She loves the stuff and she loves it on me. The scent I am talking about is Santel 33 from Le Labo. Now, if you went on Fragrantica and you looked this 
uh, fragrance up, in my opinion, it is underrated. Um, but it's really popular, and it, it kind of it reached its uh, pinnacle or apex of popularity over the last couple of years because a lot of my friends in New York, people that I know, they'll say that everyone in New York wears this scent. Um, you walk into a hotel lobby and it smells like this. Uh, it has this really tangy, woody vibe to it, which I personally love. It's unique. It's different. There have been copycats to this because of its popularity. Obviously, other fragrances have tried to copy it. Yes, sandalwood is there, but I think the unsung note here is the cardamom. Adds this fruity, spicy tanginess to the scent overall. And I personally really enjoy that piece of that. I know a lot of people say, oh, it reminds them of like pickle juice. I don't get that at all. I don't get the pickle juice comparison, but I can understand why uh, that sort of, uh, you know, not metallic, but that tanginess uh, could remind them of something like that, I guess, if you thought hard enough about it while smelling it. Personally, I think this is just a beautiful fragrance and one of the best sillages of any scent I own or have smelled for that matter. It just leaves this really intoxicating scent trail, will get you attention. And I think that's how this one really was meant to be experienced. It's not one of those fragrances that you're going to want to spray on yourself and sniff up close. It's better in its sillage and just its scent trail in general. Absolutely love this one. And performance, outstanding. Everything I've tried from Le Labo. Uh, I, I own Te Noir as well, 29. I love that scent. That it has also incredible lasting power, incredible projection. So this outperforms most fragrances in my collection, and I love it. Santel 33 from Le Labo. This is the other fragrance that I was able to pick up in my last rack store haul, and also the other contender for my favorite in this particular line scent I'm talking about is the original Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf. Warm, spicy, fresh, and sweet. Man, that seems to be what I'm gravitating towards lately. Really nice atomizer. And this is, man, just something about this one is just, it really is probably the most well-balanced, versatile of the line, aside from something like a night vision, which I know a lot of people didn't like. I personally don't think it's a bad scent. Uh, it's a little generic. I like this. I, I much prefer this. But if I'm looking at the two most well-balanced fragrances in the line and versatile, it's this and Night Vision. But I'm going to choose this one over the Night Vision because I think this one doesn't get talked about quite a bit, uh, quite enough. And I, I just love it. I didn't realize. I didn't have this in the collection. I had smelled it a while back and it reminded me too much of Bulgari Man in Black which I also own, which I also love. However, this doesn't have that dominating leather note that that has. And I like that about this. It makes it feel like it's not redundant. And this is one that I'm probably gonna wear quite often. I'm going back and forth now between this infrared and extreme, but I think the other two are more, have a more seasonal designation to them, even though the infrared, I think you could be, wear that more often. Than, than the extreme for sure. This one is definitely the most versatile and lasting lasting power all day. Great projection, great performance. Really enjoy this one and happy to have added to the collection. Spice Bomb from Victor and Rolf. I get a shout out my friend Benjamin for sending this my way because I wouldn't have a bottle, especially from this particular formulation, the 2015 uh, formulation of this scent was when also when, when it was released, I want to say. Uh, and I just, I, th guys, this next one I have a special place for. Scent I'm talking about is CH Men Privé from Carolina Herrera. And I really try to conserve this stuff, so I will not be spraying it to show you the atomizer. But this is a boozy, woody, smoky, masculine, the best kind of masculine fragrance, in my opinion. Has a little bit of leather, that booziness is really prominent on my skin, but it just, it it ties all together. It's a little bit vanillic. Man, this stuff is just amazing. I wanna wear this more often than not, but I find this to be a really ideal 
night out with your, your buddies type scent. And that's how I wore it on Saturday. I went to grab dinner with a friend. Um, we just went to a local restaurant, sat at the bar, had dinner and a couple drinks. And it's perfect for that. I wore a hoodie, uh, nice jeans, some boots. And this one is going to elevate the entire look. And I know that you can still get your hands on this. And I know that performance is an issue for some people, but this one, I can't speak to current day performance because this one performs so well on me. And that is the criticism is that the original formulations, the 2015, 2016, uh, are just much better performers. I don't know that to be the case because I haven't tried uh, a new one, but if it's being said, I have to sort of take it for face value and trust that that's the case. But still, I would say that this is an incredible fragrance. An alternative to this would be Cremo's Bourbon and Oak, which I also own, which is super inexpensive. I will also link that scent down below along. If, if I can't find this one, I will link that down below because I think they smell really close to one another. And that one's super cheap. So, uh, and I know there's also some offerings from some clone houses, but the only one I've tried is the bourbon and oak from Cremo, and I, I really like that scent. Overall, just an amazing fragrance, super classy, while still being masculine and have some edge to it. And I, I wouldn't change a thing about this scent, not one thing. Love it. CH Men Privé from Carolina Herrera. That's all I have today, guys. As always, I would love to know what your weekly rotation was. Drop it in the comment section down below. Let's see what you guys wore last week. If you like what you saw today, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Hit that bell notification so you are updated whenever I upload new content. But until then, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video.